Do you have a moment to be late for something you just made up? Uh, okay. Today we'll study two-way frequency tables. The following are data from a research. Can you sort them into two categories? Use a circle for one category and a rectangle for another category. Examine the words. How can I sort them out? Think. Oh yeah, look at that. Did you see this red? Let's use a circle for that one. So it's a word. Yes is also a word. CNN, sometimes. Pink, Samsung, medium, most of the time large. So the answer in the survey are specific words or phrases. But for the others, like the 12, the 5, the 25, 2, 16, 21, 13, 2.5, 17, and 3 fourths, and $12.50 are different category. They're like, what? They are specific numbers. Now, when you gather data from a survey, you usually gather either a categorical or a quantitative data. Categorical data are data defined by words and has a limited number of options. Sample question, what brand is your cell phone? There's only limited number of answers. Either it's, a, it's an iPhone, it's a Samsung, it's an LG or any brand, but they cannot invent any brand that doesn't exist. What is the size of your shirt? You could be a extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, specific words. But for quantitative data, data that is numerical, the data expected are numbers. For example, a sample question is, how tall are you? Your response could be five feet, five and a half, six feet, right? A specific number. And another question, how much is the shirt? You give a specific price. It could be $20 or $15 or any other amount. Organizing categorical data. Let's say I made a survey and I received the data already. I need to organize the data. I usually tally them. How many answered yes? How many answered no? How many answered 12? How many answered 15? I tally them. That's too much work. But after that, I need to organize them. Why do I need to organize them? Because data may be repetitive or random. Data may be organized using a frequency table for a single category. For example, the type of sport. For example, I just asked a group of students, hey, what's your favorite sport? And 15 answered basketball, 6 answered soccer, and 9 answered baseball. <clears throat> There is only one category here, that's why it's called single category. But there is another way you could write a table. This is a two-way frequency table. Now, based on the results of the sports, I now make another category, which is the gender. Out of those 15, 10 are male and 5 are female. Out of those 6, 3 are male and 3 are female. Out of those 9, 2 are male and 7 are female. Now, it's not a single category, but you can see one category here and another category there. Therefore, it is now a two-way frequency table. One way, two way. This is an example of a two-way frequency table. Let's say after the survey, these were the results. I tallied them and I got these numbers. But it doesn't mean anything. I need to organize them. So you could do a simple two-way frequency table. What do you do? You add the numerical data vertically, vertically. I add what I get here, I add it there, I get 25, 18, seven, all right. What else? I add horizontally. So I add 15, 10, and five, I get 30. 10, eight, and two, I get 20. I simply added them up and put it at the margins. So that's a simple, two-way frequency table. This is a two-way relative. A while ago, we were just talking about the frequency table. Now I put the word relative from the root word relate. I relate everything to the total, okay? In relation to the total. What do you mean, Ram? Okay, listen. 
relative numerical data is compared to the total and can be represented as a fraction, decimal, or percent. So how do I relate the result of 15? I won't write 15 anymore. I want it to be a percent. Check this out. What do I do? 15 divided by 50 to get the percent. 15 divided by 50, I get 0.30. That becomes 30%. For iPhone, 7 graders, 10 of them chose a Samsung. So 10 divided by 50, I get 0.20 or 20%. How about the 8 graders who chose Samsung? 10 divided by 50, I get 0.20. That's 20%. 8 divided by 50, I get 0.16 or 16%. And then for the others, 5 divided by 50, I get 10%. 2 divided by 50, I get 0.044%. So next, I add vertically, meaning 30 plus 20, 50%. So I could say 50% of the students have an iPhone. Add these two. I could say 36% of the students. And what else? I could say 14% of the students have other branded phones. And now in terms of, I uh, could say that 60% of the students are 8th graders. What else? 40% of the students are 7th graders. If you add these two, that's 100%. If you add these three, that's 100%. So we know we're right if they add up. The total vertically is 100 and the total horizontally is also 100. From the previous table, we will make labels. What do the following mean? Okay, the numbers in the middle, okay, it is called the joint relative frequency. What do you mean by that? Joint relative frequency because you are joining one variable from the row and one variable from the column. You're joining all these variables together with another set of variables they meet here they meet there they meet there okay every all the data in pink is the joint relative frequency the marginal relative frequency from the word marginal look at the margins so that means i'm looking at this and i'm looking at that it is the ratio of the sum of the joint relative frequency in a row or column and the total number of data value. So this totals marginal. Okay, that and that. The next one is the conditional relative frequency from the root word of conditional condition. Do not just base everything on 50 now, there is a condition. To obtain the conditional relative frequency, divide the joint frequency, divide the joint down inside the table by the marginal, by the marginal frequency total or the outer edge that represents the condition being investigated. And what are we investigating now? The grade level. Our focus is not everybody, but just the grade level. So your totals you will use are the 30 and the 20. For example, for example, 15 out of 30, what is that? How much percent is that? 50%. 10 out of 30, how much percent is that? 33.3%. 5 out of 30, that is what? 16.7%. And if you want to check if you're right, add them up. 100% is grade level, 8 grade, eight grade students, 100% out of all the 8 graders, 50% likes an iPhone. Now let's look at the other one. Okay, now let's look at the 7th graders. You know our total is 20. So everything will be based on that 20. 10 divided by 20, that's also what? 50%. Okay, what else? 8 divided by 20, you will get 0.40 or 40%. 2 divided by 20 is just 10%. Check, does it add up to 100? Yes, it does. That's a marginal frequency based on the grade level. There is also another marginal frequency condition based on the cell phone brand. Okay, let's focus now on the cell phone brand. Therefore, that 15 divided by 25 is 60%. And that 10 divided by 25 is 0.40 or 40%. What does it mean? It means that 40% 
40% of all the iPhones are owned by the 7th grader. Total is 100, so we're sure. Now let's look at the Samsung. 10 out of 18 divided, you'll get 56. So the next one is 8 divided by 18, you get 0.44 or 44%. Add them up, you get 100. So we're good. Next, 5 over 7 is 71%. 2 over 7 is 29%. Add them up, it's 100. Okay? So again, this is conditional. Look at what condition are they asking for. Okay? Cell phone brands, therefore, the cell phone brands will be my different total. Let's have some practice. So this is a raw data. This is a frequency table. We will now make it a relative frequency table. Let's start with the joint. Then, then we'll move to the marginal. Okay, what happens to 21? I'll give you one answer and then the rest you'll do it. 21 based on the total because this is joint. 21 divided by 240 is 0.0875. How do I make that percent? Two decimal place to the right, 8.75. Now, try the rest. I'll give you time. Ready. Here we go. This divided by that, you get 0.1625. Change it to percent. It becomes 16.25. Get that? This becomes 0.5625. That is 56.25. We're good. So, what happens to 45? 45 divided by 240, you get 0.1875. That becomes 18.75%. Okay? So, how about the marginal? For the marginal, you can also do 156 divided by 240, but you already have these two. Simply add them, you will get 65%. Add these two, you will get 35%. Add these two, you will get 25%. Add these two, you will get 75 Just to check, add 100%, add 100%. So that is your relative frequencies, if both the joint and the marginal. Now let's try some conditional frequency. Our condition is based on gender. Gender total 60, gender total female 180. So use these numbers, but I'm not going to use 240. Remember, I'll base it on the gender totals. First example. 21 divided by 60, I get 0.35. For the male, using sports utility vehicle, that's going to be 35%. So how many males now use a sports car? What do I do? This divided by that, and then change it to percent, 65%. Female using an SUV, this divided by that, 0.75. 75%. This divided by that, 25%. Good job. So just to know that we are right, what do I do? Add these two, you get 100%. Add these two, you get 100%. You don't need to work on these two because your focus is the gender. Okay? Next. The next condition is vehicle. Okay? Look at the vehicle. Um, the total here is 156. The total for sports car is 84. So 21 divided by 156, 0.1345, two decimal places, move it to the right, 13.46%. Try the next one. How about this? Hmm? Divided by, you get this, make it percent, 86.54. This divided by what? This one? By that one or by 84? Yes, by 84. And you get 46.43. This divided by that, you will get 0.5357. That becomes 53.57. If you look at the table, how do you interpret that? You could say, oh, from my study, I could say that based on the vehicles, because that's my focus, based on the vehicles, there are a lot of female who uses an SUV. And based on sports car, there are more women using sports car compared to men. Just to check if we are right, add these two, you get 100%. Add 
and you still you get a hundred percent got it now you have to practice some more get ready for some class bye